you know, blindfolded someone and put them in this car, they probably wouldn't guess that it's on those, you know, grabber all-terrain tires. So, you know, kudos to the engineers on the chassis tuning. Welcome to Drive Culture. I'm Jonathan Rivers, and today we have the 2024 Honda Passport Trail Sport. And I'm gonna tell you why this may be an awesome daily off-road capable vehicle. So we'll go over the exterior, the interior, the powertrain, and of course, take it for a drive. So if this is content you're after or you're new to the channel, please be sure to click that bell to subscribe to come back for more. And with that, let's get after it. All right, guys, here we are with the exterior of the Honda Passport Trail Sport. Uh, and again, this car here is painted in what they call diffuse sky blue pearl. So if you've seen our Honda Pilot Trail Sport review, you'll notice that that vehicle was also painted in the same color. Um, and that's because, again, that's a uh, trail sport specific color. So if you see that driving down the road, you should instantly know that you're looking at a trail sport version of Honda's uh, SUVs here. So again, I really like it. It's that kind of like baby blue color. Uh, but again, with this being the Passport Trail Sport, you do get some signature elements. Uh, you get an upgraded kind of off-road grill here. It's kind of painted in a, a really nice gray color. I like that a lot. Um, you got that Trail Sport badge with the orange accents. We'll talk about that more as you'll see those highlights throughout the vehicle. And again, with this being a mid-cycle refresh, they just made some kind of minor changes to the lower fascia. You know, you still get fog lights and low beam LED headlights, things like that. So again, overall, I think it looks really good uh, with the sun in our face here. Let's go ahead and look at the other side. Now, one thing I want to call out before we go over the rest of the exterior is the pricing for the Passport. So uh, this year for 2024, uh, there's essentially just three trims. So you can get an EXL. Uh, we'll show you the pricing here. It's at like 41.9 uh, MSRP. Um, this Passport Trail Sport though is 44.5, and then you can get the Black Edition which is 47,970. So again, under 48 grand fully loaded. This one here under 45 grand uh, with some pretty good features and tech. So, uh, you know, again, I think it's a pretty good value in this segment. So as we continue on, you can see the side profile here. Again, I think the car looks really good. It's that kind of like two row midsize SUV. Uh, it's definitely a lot shorter than the Pilot. Uh, it's not three rows like the Pilot, so the Passport kind of truly stands out as its own vehicle. So let's go ahead and take a look at the wheel and tire package. Now with this being the Trail Sport, you actually get real all-terrain tires, and you can see they're pretty aggressive. So um, they're a 245 60R18 uh, wheel and tire package, and it's painted in what Honda calls like a pewter gray color. So uh, it's like a light gray, um, but yeah, these are grabber all-terrain tires. Um, yeah, definitely aggressive. Um, and apparently the uh, Passport also gets what they call uh, off-road tuned suspension, right, to help out. Um, beyond that, it does have, uh, you know, a torque vectoring all-wheel drive, which we'll talk about once we get to the powertrain. But um, beyond that, for the Trail Sport trim, you get things like the gloss black mirror caps. Uh, you also get the roof rails, which are like in this kind of like gray color. It's a really nice color, um, you know, then you're just standard typical black. But as we make our way to the rear of the vehicle here, this is where you also get to see a couple um, Trail Sport elements. Um, you obviously get the specific badging back here. Again, you can see it's with that orange accent. But beyond that, they actually changed the other badges black too. So even like the all-wheel drive badge is like in gloss black. And then over here, you can see the Passport badge is also in gloss black. And you got your typical Honda Chrome emblem in the back top there with a black uh, brow that goes across the back. And again, with Trail Sport, you get those lower dual exhaust finishers, a class three trailer hitch. You know, this car can tow up to 5,000 pounds. So again, overall, I think it's really good styling. Let us know down in the comments what you guys think. Uh, again, are you going for something like Passport or do you need the extra space and the third row and are going for something like the Pilot? So with that, let's go ahead and hop inside to talk about the interior. All right, guys, here we are in the interior of the Passport Trail Sport. Now, again, with this being a mid-cycle refresh, um, they made a couple of small changes inside, um, but it's mostly carryover from the previous uh, Passports. Um, it has some pretty good tech and features, so let's talk about that. So as we kind of dial in here and get up close, um, you can see uh, it does have Honda's 8-inch color touchscreen. Uh, it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility but it's not wireless. So you're gonna have to go ahead and plug in down below. Um, there is a USB-A for data, C for charging. And on this trim, you do get a wireless charging pad. 
Um, you'll also see there's like physical controls for the HVAC, the climate, engine push start stop button. And then down below, we'll talk about the transmission and the uh, powertrain section, but you can see it is one of those push button style gear selectors. Um, you know, it also has things for like your, uh, you know, drive mode access. So again, we'll talk about that here in the drive portion of the video. Uh, but you can see again, with this being a trail sport, we'll go ahead in a second, look at the seats themselves, but there's kind of like orange contrast stitching throughout. Um, even on the steering wheel here, you'll see there's like orange contrast stitching. Uh, it's a nice touch. Uh, it's also on the door panels and the seats. Like I said, we'll go ahead and take a look at those in a second. Um, again, I think, you know, there's a nice uh, upgrades in here. Uh, it does have a seven speaker um, audio system in here. Um, you do have to step up to the black edition to get the full 10 speaker kind of really powerful audio system. So again, you guys know I like music, so I kind of wish maybe it would have had the, uh, the more premium audio system here on the Trail Sport Edition, but it does sound pretty good, um, all things considered. Um, you'll also see that there is a uh, moonroof on this trim and you get things like a you know sunglass holder uh, up top as well. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the front seats and then we'll hop in the second row as well. All right, here we are with the front seats of the, the Passport Trail Sport. So like I said, they do have some nice accents. You can see it's got the Trail Sport uh, stitched into the headrest in orange, the contrast stitching on the seats. Uh, the center console area as well as i mentioned previously the contrast stitching on the steering wheel as well and then there's some uh, nice accents like you also get the trail sport branded all-weather floor mats so that does come standard when you get this trim you don't have to like go and get them as an accessory or whatnot so again i think that's a nice little touch point uh, and again the seats are are comfortable they're power there is a a, a lumbar on the uh, driver's side as well so um, pretty good seats good styling and, uh, and comfortable. So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the second row. All right, here is the second row of the Passport Trail Sport. So uh, there's definitely good um, space all around, right? You know, again, you got good leg room, head room. Uh, you can see here, that's kind of like where my driver position is uh, and a pretty good spot on the passenger side as well. As usual, I got a, a booster seat over there so you can kind of see how much space is in case you have kids in the back. Um, but it is a true, uh, you know, five passenger midsize SUV. Uh, and again, you'll see like that same uh, orange contrast stitching carries out even into the second row. So that's a nice touch. Um, you do get dual mat pockets on both back seats. And you also, again, like I said, you get that all weather uh, floor mats even in the second row. Now, as we look over here in the center console area, uh, you do get HVAC vents, um, but no controls. So that has to be done up front. Um, you do get a 115 volt socket and two USB-C ports for charging back here. So that is a pretty nice option. And also on the doors, you do have manual uh, pull type, uh, you know, rear sunshades. Uh, and again, it's pretty sunny here. So those are nice to have. And I'll show you lastly here, it even has a center armrest, which you can pull down. So it uh, gives you those two cup holders there. Uh, the center uh, headrest also raises up. So again, it truly is a five passenger vehicle. So with that, we'll go ahead and check out the cargo space. All right, guys, here's the cargo space area and it's uh, pretty spacious, right? There's about 50 cubic feet behind the uh, second row seats here. So there's a ton of space. Uh, it's completely flat, which is nice. You can see the second row seats are also 60, 40 folding split. So uh, you could push those down and have tons of space back here. So um, there's even uh, a 12 volt socket here in the corner. Um, you've also got these buttons here. So if you push those, that's how you actually lower uh, the second row seats. There's one on each side and you got like little cubbies off to the side for extra space. But down here, you even have a little bit of underfloor storage space. So I've got, you know, some folding camping chairs back here. Uh, it's a little deep. It's um, but again, like you can fit like a small backpack or some other small goods back here, which is nice. And then if I go ahead and try to open up this second, look at that. You actually get a compact spare tire, which is pretty rare these days, right? You know, normally it's some kind of a, you know, fix a flat or like a tire repair kit, but you actually get a compact spare here on this trim as well. And you got this little latch to just kind of pull that shut and keep it flat. So yeah, definitely good space. And in case I didn't mention it, this trim also comes with the power tailgate. So uh, that can be operated by the remote or with this little button here on the edge of the tailgate. So with that, let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain. 
All right, guys, here we are with the powertrain of the Passport Trail Sports. So it's Honda's typical 3.5 liter V6 engine. It makes 280 horsepower and 262 foot pounds of torque. So it's that reliable V6 engine that's been around for quite some time. Again, this isn't the new V6 engine that's in the Honda Pilot refresh. So again, this engine has been around, it's bulletproof. Uh, it's a really powerful engine and it's good, sounds good. So we'll, we'll get that here in a second. Um, it's made it to only a nine speed transmission. So again, uh, just like the Ridgeline Black Edition that we reviewed on the channel, uh, this car has the nine speed transmission, not the newer 10 speed transmission that's in some of Honda's cars. But as I said in the Ridgeline review, uh, again, it's a, a really refined transmission at this point. They've kind of worked out all the bugs. Uh, it's just pretty smooth. Uh, so we'll talk about that in the drive section. And then lastly, let's talk about the drivetrain. So with it being the trail sport trim, it does come standard with the Honda's, what they call IVTM4 uh, torque vectoring all wheel drive system. So it really works magic. You can feel the power distribution, um, you know, given the different, um, you know, road surfaces that you're driving on, it does a really good job of putting the power to the ground. So there's no better way than to actually uh, talk about that than to take this thing for a drive. So let's go ahead and hop inside. All right, guys, here we are inside the Passport Trail Sport. We're gonna go ahead and take this thing for a drive now. So go ahead and start it up, slide you forward. Obviously that's a setting you can change in the menu, but I like the easy ingress, egress there. So uh, gonna go ahead and uh, take this thing for a drive. Now, one of the things, and maybe you heard it, is uh, this car, again, it's a mid-cycle refresh, so it hasn't gotten all the latest updates yet. So it actually still has a manual parking brake. Uh, so you gotta push it down with your foot there. So it's kind of old school. Um, you know, obviously some of the newer models have an electronic parking brake, but uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this does have the nine speed transmission. Uh, it has this push button style gear selector here. So I'll go ahead, put it in D to go ahead and take it for a drive. So we'll go ahead and depart. And uh, yeah, again, like I said, in the powertrain section, it uses that bulletproof 3.5 liter V6 engine that, uh, you know, Honda has been using for a really long time, right? So, and you know, 280 horsepower, again, really good power. Um, I think again, for daily driving, merging on freeways, passing, uh, it's a really, really good powertrain. Um, what I'll talk about here as I'm kind of getting out of this parking lot is uh, just like the steering wheel feels really nice. Uh, again, on this uh, trail sport trim, it does have like kind of uh, like perforation here on the, uh, the sides of the steering wheel with uh, smooth leather on the top and bottom. And then again, it has that uh, trail sport orange stitching, which is just a really nice touch. Uh, I think that looks really good. It kind of matches all the other uh, orange uh, stitching that you'll see throughout the vehicle. Um, one of the things I maybe didn't talk about in the interior is the instrument cluster in front of you. So it's about seven inches in size. Um, it is like a color digital display. Um, you do have analog gauges for things like the uh, oil temp and the fuel, um, but you do have a little bit of a customization there. You know, Honda's now moved on to do a, a different um, digital instrument cluster setup, but again, I still think this is fine for what it is. Uh, as I mentioned, you also got the eight inch uh, color touchscreen here. Again, let us know down below, would you expect something bigger? Should they upgrade it? Again, like I said, this is only a mid-cycle refresh, but uh, overall, you know, content-wise, it's pretty good. So now that we're driving, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try it out here. So there's a button down here, looks like a little uh, passport. You push it and it brings up the drive mode. So you've got normal, which is what I'm in now. That's kind of like the default setting. And then there's a couple other modes. So there's a snow mode, there's a mud mode, and there's also a sand mode. So I'm not gonna switch in any of those because I'm on smooth pavement, but you could imagine if you cycle through those modes and select them, obviously it's gonna change things like the uh, IVT M4, you know, torque vectoring all wheel drive system. It's basically gonna tell it to distribute the torque and power to a certain wheel given the, uh, the road conditions that you're in. So that's a nice feature to have and it kind of shows off the uh, off-road capability of this car. Um, off to the uh, the left of the steering wheel, you might have saw this in, in the interior, is there's a little green button for econ mode. So if you push that, again, it kind of dials back the throttle response. Um, it actually even adjusts the HVAC, like the climate control. So like when you push the econ button, it actually like, you know, if you got the temp set at like 65, it'll kind of like, you know, dial it back so it feels more like a 66, 67. It doesn't show you that, but you can tell that it's adjusting the climate controls as well. And that's all to get, you know, maximum fuel range 
engine and, and efficiency, right? That's the whole purpose of, of something like an econ mode. So I'm in the normal mode. Um, there technically is no sport mode, um, but again, on the D selector for the drive, um, there's also a D slash S. So if you push that again, it puts it into S, makes it a little bit more sporty. Um, so we'll, we'll try out both modes right now. Um, but again, driving, I can say that uh, this car is really, really comfortable. And to the point where, again, I, I think I said this in the Pilot Trail Sport review too, like I don't know if you would actually guess that this car has the all-terrain tires. Like, I mean, there's maybe a little bit extra in road noise um, compared to like a standard Passport, but like ride comfort is really, really good, guys. It is surprisingly good. Like again, I think again, if I just, you know, blindfolded someone and put them in this car, they probably wouldn't guess that it's on those you know grabber all-terrain tires so you know kudos to the engineers on the chassis tuning and the suspension tuning because it doesn't feel like a compromise having those tires on this car um, ride quality is good there's a couple bumps and undulations we're going over and uh, this car just feels really smooth feels really planted so uh, again I think you know if you've got your family in the car they're not gonna complain you know that you're in your kind of daily off-road vehicle so uh, so that's really nice there um, but like I said this car has got that engine it's really good you know the nine speed you can kind of play with the gears there's paddle shifters here so you know if I get down here just so you can hear the engine let's get into this a little bit right so so actually it's pretty quick too so I mean again it sounds really good right that Honda growl that v6 growl that they've had in so many of their vehicles for so many years that's still there it still sounds really good it's pretty powerful and again when you're playing with the paddle shifters uh, in most cases it'll leave it in the gear that you select one through nine but in some cases right it will automatically default uh, to the standard drive mode if you're getting a little too crazy there so um, that I'm gonna go ahead now and push the DS button again and so that puts it into what's called S transmission mode you get a little S in the um, digital meter in front of you and you instantly notice the throttle response changes and the like the RPMs kind of jumped up as well so with this now if you push the paddle shifters you do get kind of like a semi manual mode so it basically says S M and then the gear that you're in so I'm now in third gear and if I click it again now I'm in you know second gear so again you know it has got a really good growl to it and again the paddle shifter surprisingly I'm just clicking away and it's almost instantaneous so that's pretty good paddle shift tuning as well so again we're gonna come up to a stop sign so I'll give it a kind of a full blast but um, let us know what you guys think down below again I think this car again given the price point right for less than 45 grand you get some great styling you get you know off-road capability uh, you get pretty good feature content again maybe a little bit more here we go real quick Again, I think I said that even in the the, uh, the Ridgeline uh, video that we have up, as well as the Pilot Trail Sport video we have up. I mean, the V6 in these cars, they, they, they move, right? I mean, they're pretty big cars and a little bit heavy, but all things considered, uh, you know, again, it is a, a pretty quick vehicle. So, again, I think for the feature content, uh, for the price point, for the performance, this is gonna be pretty hard to beat. So let us know what else you guys are cross shopping this with. Let us know if you've already made your choice. I'm gonna give it one last blast. We're in first gear now, so the launch is actually even better. So, and then yeah, there's 50 miles an hour. So, so pretty good sound. I'm having way too much fun here. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. And with that, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. All right, guys, that's a wrap. What did you think of the 2024 Honda Passport Trail Sport? Is it rugged enough for you? Does it meet your off-road needs? Does it meet your daily driving needs? Let us know down in the comments below what you guys think. And also let us know if you wanna see other Passport trims on this channel, we're happy to bring it to you. So again, if you're new to the channel, please be sure to like, watch, and subscribe to come back for more, and we'll see you at the next episode.